You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities, and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Hey, 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 what is going on, guys? Welcome to another incredible episode of Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeartRadio. And I am your host, Dini. We have another special guest for you guys, so you definitely want to stick around for that. And as a matter of fact, text your buddies, family members, or even share it on social media right now and let them know that we are about to dive deep into another interview. Before I bring my guest on, I do want to say that your reasons you know for every anxiety for every fear for every worry every anger frustration you have there is a reason because those reasons seem so real and so compelling you choose to experience anxiety anger and all of the rest you know but if you had even stronger, even more compelling reasons to be confident, calm, focused, loving, and effective. Just imagine the kinds of positive experiences those reasons would lead you to create. For every thought and every action, you have your reasons. And for every result you achieve, for every drama you act out, you have your reasons. Look around you at all the things you've attracted to yourself. Look with an honest, discerning eye. And what you'll see will be an accurate representation of your most genuine and driving reasons. The quality of, of your life depends on the reasons you have for living it. The, the what of your life is a direct result of the why. If the what seems to be lacking, you know, then the why is begging to be adjusted and when the reasons are in line with who you are and who you want to be so too will the experience be so follow the reasons and the purposes that express who you know you are and your life will become what you know it can be take that from me coach denny that is my word and word is bond Access, a minority-run nonprofit organization dedicated to supporting survivors of domestic violence and sexual abuse. Our prevention division educates the public on healthy relationships, consent, and boundaries, while our recovery division provides support and resources after trauma. We offer workshops and coaching to individuals worldwide, helping them navigate complex issues and reclaim their power. We believe in the power of education and conversation. Our interdisciplinary approach challenges societal norms and empowers individuals to live authentically and purposefully. With the guidance of our accredited coaches, you can overcome obstacles, achieve your goals, and create the future you desire. Don't wait to take control of your life and your sexuality. Visit our website, SexSorg, to learn more about our services and how you can get involved. All right, all right. Again, welcome to the show. You're listening to VRL. That's Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart's Radio. And I am your host, Dini. Our interviews are designed to go beyond music, news, books, art, acting, films, technology, education, entrepreneurship, entertainment, and sometimes even past that thing that we call the ego. Our interviews are designed to go behind the scenes and into the minds of these incredible human beings, you know, the ones who are out there giving it their all for me, for you, and for the world. Well, speaking of world, there is a world where, you know, music often mirrors the chaos and the beauty of life. There is one artist that stands out for his ability to weave both, um, to weave both of them into a compelling narrative. Scott David Roberts. He's a songwriter whose roots are as deep as 
and varied as the genres he explores and brings a fresh perspective to the metal scene with his latest single, Ballad of Beelzebub. From the vibrant gospel echoes of his youth to the dark chords of his newest track, Scott's journey is a testament to resilience, creativity, and the transformative power of music. So join us as we explore the mind of a songwriter who not only observes the world, but write the stories. And with that, let's welcome Scott David Roberts to our show. Hello, hello. Welcome. Hey, what's going on? Hey, man, it's going great. How's it going for you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good. I'm doing good. I'm good. All right, all right. Well, man, Scott, welcome to the show. Um, just jumping right in, your latest track, Ballad of Bills Above, has really captured the attention of listeners, uh, not only with the deep, introspective lyrics and powerful melodies, but the title of the track. Um, can you share what sparked the creation of this song and, and how it reflects your musical evolution? Well, my, my wife would probably say I watch too much news. <laughs> um, and, and there's some truth to that actually um, I was just noticing all the, the chaos that's going on around the world um, several months ago uh, in Israel and um, in the east and it, it kind of affected me it kind of angered me um, and I started thinking you know how um, evil propagates evil and I, I started um, started coming up with these lyrics that were kind of an expression of the way I was feeling at the time. And I had previously come up with with these these chord progressions, which, which kind of sounded kind of like a metal song, but I never quite knew what to do with with them. And so then these lyrics started coming together, and I realized that this was these these were for that song. And so I started um, putting the lyrics together with the music and started kind of thinking about, um, you know, what the song is supposed to sound like. And I realized it was it was kind of in the tradition of maybe an early uh, 2000s metal song or even something a little more current. Um, and, and so it's basically an expression of, of maybe not anger, maybe it's more fear. Um, mm of what's going on in the world and sometimes you feel like you're the only one that you know is, sees this happening and um is is fearful of it or 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 sees you know possible uh even worse outcomes so um, i wrote a song which is kind of rare for me i really don't write a lot of metal songs i, I write some rock songs but i don't write you know hard metal songs but anyway this song came together and it, it, it's kind of a parable to um, what's going on in the world. Yeah. At first, you said you know there there were feelings of anger, and then you know maybe fear as well. Um, metal is known for driving you know a lot of emotion, especially rage. Um, did you make it a point to stay away from politics in this record? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I did. Um, I think you know politics, especially in in rock songs or metal songs, is a, uh, a song killer. Um, mm. Nobody, if you want that, you can turn on cable news. Um, but this song was was an expression of feeling. Um, Beelzebul is uh, one of the seven deadly uh, demons that was cast from heaven with Satan to hell. And he's uh, referred to as the Lord of the Flies. Uh, mm -hmm. There's two pronunciations. There's Beelzebul and Beelzebub. Uh, Beelzebul rolled with the tongue better for the lyrics, so <laughs> I went with that. But, uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's an it's emotion. It's just it's emotions what it is. Yeah. So why did you choose the Lord of the Flies? Are we in a? Um... Well, the... <laughs> well, I'll let you answer. <laughs> well. Beel Beelzebul is referred to in the Bible as Lord, Lord of the Flies. Um, it, he's one, he's kind of like the chief lieutenant of Satan. And uh, so I started writing the song, and about three-fourths of the way through, coming up with the lyrics, um, 
I realized that the that fit right into the the end of the third verse, and I I would it was just kind of weird the way the song came together. It, it it's it's usually for me writing lyrics is probably the hardest part of songwriting. Mm. Uh, but this song kind of just started happening, and so it I always think music is in itself is kind of a spiritual thing. Um, yeah. Music, uh, writing music. Uh, sometimes you can sit down and you can't come up with anything and other times stuff starts coming out of you and you don't know where it's coming from and it's just kind of crazy so anyway this just like fit right in um, so I hired we, we, we found this this guy in Ecuador that he sings a lot of metal stuff for hire um, and this guy had just this really kind of evil sounding voice when he wanted to make it so and we hired him to do the vocals and he just laid down these these vocal tracks that were like you know get your attention i mean especially the the part uh three-fourths away through the song which we're we're talking about and um the song came out honestly a, even a little darker than i intended it to oh wow uh, but but i think it it is it, it became what it was supposed to be and and uh, I, you know, it's one of those things I, I wouldn't do it any differently if I had to do it over. So when you got the song back, what was your initial reaction? Um, well, it's funny. He, his his first language is not English, so we, we got the first version of his lyrics back, and there was there was some mispronunciation of words and so forth. So we sent it back and kind of discussed it. I, I actually changed a few of the words so that it wouldn't be a problem um, singing it. And But then when it, it came together and we were in the studio, my, my producer um, turned around and he goes, man, he goes, you're, you're, you're going to get a lot of people's attention <laughs> with, what you're, what you're, with your lyrics here. And I said, you know, well, that's that's kind of, what I intended to do you know it's therapy for me as much as anything I'm not really necessarily intending it to I guess have any other effect than that it was kind of my expression more you know playing the guitar is kind of my as I say kind of my cigarette it's it's the way I de-stress after the work day and so um, it was therapy for me but I love the way the song came out but it really you know happy the way it did yeah are you planning a visual for it i'm thinking about it um i just don't want it to be the obvious if, if uh, i did a video i want it i want it to um to you know um uh, be something besides a bunch of demons jumping around or you know uh, living out the lyrics i want it to have some you know interesting aspect to it so yes i am thinking about that it's just um right now i i just haven't come up with <laughs> what the video would be about yes sir all right man so uh reflecting on your journey from a young musician to where you are today what do you consider the most transformative experience that that has shaped your music well i came from oklahoma and when I was in Oklahoma, I tended to write more, I, I call it Nashville-type genre music. And that's, in fact, where I recorded most of my songs was in Nashville. I since moved out here to California, and I think, I think the culture out here has affected me because I started mm -hmm. writing more rock-oriented songs. And uh, <clears throat> probably the most transformative there is a there's a group in, in Oklahoma um, called Middle Sisters and the, the girl in it one of the two girls in it's a friend of mine and they started writing this writing music I had actually stopped writing music for quite a few years and they started writing music coming up this great stuff and it motivated me to pick my guitar up again I kind of quit playing the electric guitar and picked up the acoustic guitar uh -huh. And then with the acoustic guitar, I started coming, trying to come up with these different chord progressions and, you know, different um, styles of playing. And that kind of um, 
with the Cal- California influence, I would say, started changing the, the style of music I play. So that'd be the most transformative influence from my friend's band and living out here in California amongst the um, uh, a very different culture than where I came from, Oklahoma. How, how did you come to realize your purpose in music? <laughs> I'm sorry, what's the question? How did you come to realize your purpose in music? Um, I, I just, I started playing the guitar when I was 13. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, I probably cannot play another artist's music all the way through. Hmm. Uh, I always try to come up with my own stuff. It, I just have no interest in playing other people's music. So there's, there's something about coming up with unique chord progressions that interests me. Yeah. Um, and when you come up with something that's new or whatever, it's like a puzzle, working on a puzzle. And I just think it is the coolest thing when you come up with that, with that chord progression and you know it's something, you know it's going to be a song. And, you, and then you take it to the studio and you put guitar, you put drums in it, you put you, uh, unique vocals in it, keyboard and all that, and it becomes a totally different thing. I, I'm not even a singer. You know, I, I will sometimes play on the, on the tracks, uh, but I'm pretty much strictly a songwriter. Wow. So you're like the maestro and you get to shape these records like they're clay. Um, you get to instruct the vocalist on how you can hear your own song. Um, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't even imagine that process. Is it difficult? Um, not really. I find it kind of exciting um, hmm. because I sit down with my producer and we're kind of going, well, "What you know? What is?" Let's think of some groups and what do we want this song to sound like? And I came up, came up with the Nine Inch Nails, uh, some groups like that. And uh, Marilyn Manson, I, I'm not a big fan of either band, but the style of music was kind of the segue into what the song would sound like. Um, and then we started thinking about singers, but even here in Southern California, <coughs> I could not find single singer that yet had the, the vocal gravitas to record the song mm. so I, I got on fervor and I found this guy in Ecuador um, and I listened to his stuff and man it's, he just had the voice I was like this is a guy right here so he took a chance you know um, and paying him and having him lay vocals on it and he, you know like I say he did a great great job but yeah it's so fun to listen to a song you know become whatever it's going to be in the studio um and there again a lot of it's the producer you know they they're the ones that mix and, and master it and you know unless you're like a totally hands-on person and and you know which i'm not um they they're they're part of the equation it's it's a it's not a one person deal man it's a, a lot of people come into play to make a song um what it is yeah you said you uh well you mentioned that you picked up the guitar at 13 what was the re- um what, what what was responsible for you to uh get into music or how did music find you <laughs> man when i was um, about 12 <clears throat> i was a big kiss fan ah and yeah, and so I wanted to play Kiss songs and um, had Kiss posters all over the wall. Had Errol Smith posters, Led Zeppelin, Ted Nugent, um, all, all the things. Uh, and of course, then I wanted to get an electric guitar. And I got an electric guitar and I started, and then amp, I started playing it. And I kind of progressed to a point, but then I, I kind of like stalled out because all, all I was playing was bar chords, you know, and they're. I kind of, I have once I got the point, I, I couldn't get any better. I, I was never going to be a lead guitar player type of person. So, I, there again, I put the guitar down for quite a while, but then when I got an acoustic guitar, you know, I could hear subtle changes in the way you, you um, voice a chord or 
the various chords you come up with, you can hear the distinct differences in them, and that's what it intrigued me. Um, and of course, over the years, I've had experience uh, from, you know, I, I grew up in the church, a Baptist church, listening to my mom sing in the choir, and um, the different, uh, you know, possibilities with vocal arrangements, and then country music. You know, living in Oklahoma, I had a lot of country music, and then moving out here to California, and so I, I don't, I don't know. I can, I can't think of one single thing that influenced me the most, other than life, you know, and and all the people and the things that have happened and in in my life. So I did write a song one time. I, this is kind of a big turning point. My father committed suicide when I was young, mm. uh, and I wrote a song called "I Really Need I Really Need to Know," and it was about my my feelings at the time. I went through a lot of anxiety and depression, and I wrote this song. And several years later, I uh, entered it into a song competition and got first prize, and um, came with a little re multi-track recorder, and. With that multi-track recorder, I started laying down a bunch of these, like I say, little chord progressions, and I still, you know, pick and choose from those chord progressions, some of them that I came up with, you know, 20 years ago or more, wow. uh, and develop them in the songs if I can. Some I just can't. Some I stall out, you know, after a few verses or whatever. Yeah. Did you paint your face like Kiss too? <laughs> no, no, I I didn't. Um, I did go to to a Kiss concert in 1977 when they had all the fire and they were at the height of their prowess. I was 12 years old, so it was just you know it was beyond real to me. Although I have to say the first concert I went to was Leonard Skinner in 1975, I think. I was a little kid and. There was a concert, which was kind of a unique thing. I guess I just discovered concerts. So my dad takes me to this Leonard Skinner concert. This is before the, the plane crash and everything. And so I'm in there, and the band's playing. I really didn't know any of their songs. Uh, the people behind me was, you know, it was a hippie era type of thing. These people were passing a joint back and forth down the aisle. And I'm just sitting there looking behind me at the row behind me, watching these people smoke this joint which I knew what it was. And uh, finally, one of them takes the joint. He, they noticed me watching them, and he, he offers the joint to me. And I'm going, Dad, Dad, they're, you know, they're trying to offer me the joint. And, and uh, so as a joke, my dad takes me up to the uh, security booth, and he goes, why don't you tell the officer what happened? I said, these guys are down there smoking a joint. And one of them offered it to me, and the, the cop that was listening to me goes, well, son, why don't you go down there and arrest him for me? <laughs> <laughs> Real story. Wow. Wow. Man, that is some history there. <laughs> Long All time right. ago. Yeah, man. All right, we're getting ready to dive deep into your single, Ballad of... Uh, yeah, there's Bells two... Bells of Bulb. There's two different ways to say it. I always remember the old way, Beelzebub. Beelzebub, yes. Beelzebub was kind of the original, but Beelzebub rolled with the lyrics better, so. Absolutely. All right, guys, we're about to jump into the single, and then we'll, when we come back, we'll invite Scott uh, to our hot seat. That's where he can perform for us if he wants to. He could sing, rap. Uh, poetry, spoken word, tell a joke, tell a story, play an instrument, give advice, or do nothing at all. That's cool as well. But for right now, guys, here it is. Stay tuned. Yes. 
secret to smart wealth is not just a great idea, but ongoing royalties from that idea. Imagine getting regular income from a song or movie, a fashion idea, or even a popular trademark. That's the breakthrough concept of the Royalties LLC app, an intellectual investing properties platform which allows you to invest in intellectual properties. Say goodbye to old school investing and say hello to passive income you can rely on. When you invest in intellectual properties owned by Royalties app, you will receive guaranteed monthly royalties for the term of their contract. Managing and selecting your royalty choices is fast and fun. For example, when you invest in music royalties, every time someone plays the song, whether it's a grocery store or a person streaming it, you earn a small payout called a royalty. Let your intuition and passions guide you to regular guaranteed monthly passive income. Visit royaltiespassiveincome.cash or search Royalties LLC and download on the Apple App Store or Android Play Store. All right, all right, guys. That was Scott David Roberts with his song, Ballad of BL's Above. All right, as we wrap up today's episode, we want to extend our deepest thanks to Scott David Roberts for sharing his journey, his music inspiration, and the stories behind his powerful music. Scott's dedication to his craft and his ability to channel life's complexities into soul-stirring melodies remind us of the profound impact music can have on our lives. So be sure to check out Ballad of BL's Above and follow Scott's musical journey on all platforms. Until next time, keep tuning in for more inspiring stories from the artists who create soundtracks to our lives. Goodbye for right now. We'll be back in just a moment, so stay tuned. Thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio Live. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab it from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, Spotify, CastBox, iHeart's Radio, iTunes, YouTube, the app Podcast Addict, or over at our website which again is onlyonemediagroup.com and that goes for every single show that we've ever aired if you like to request some music or send something for me to play email it to vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com that is v as in victor and here's my disclaimer we are genre free we do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay but facts alone And actually, scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right. That's the bottom line. This is my show, so deal with it. (laughs) Just kidding. On behalf of myself, Denny, I appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word because sharing is caring. We stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show. Be sure to connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Snapchat, TikTok, at all social media sites as well as Spreaker, YouTube. We always follow back. Okay, well, just remember to put yourself into everything that you do and never Stop investing in yourself. Peace, love, grilled cheese, and talk with you later. You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a 7th Sign Regime Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate Exclusive. What's up, guys? It's Dini, and I want to welcome you on a journey of the heart and of the mind. These Fucking Feelings podcast is a beacon in the world of mental health advocacy, and it invites you to join a conversation 
that's changing lives. We are here to share, listen, and grow together. Led by the passionate Micah Bravery, alongside the insightful Rebecca and Crystal, this award-winning podcast dives deep into the human experience. From navigating relationships to coping with loss, no topic is off limits. It's about real stories and real emotions. These fucking feelings, it's more than just a show. It's a community, a place where vulnerable isn't just accepted, it's celebrated. You can find it across major platforms, including YouTube and Facebook Watch. This podcast is a touchstone for anyone seeking understanding and support. These fucking feelings podcast, where every emotion is valid and every story matters. Tune in and transform the way you see mental health.